Hi everyone, welcome to my home. Uh, what you see here is uh, my poor man's lab. Uh, it's actually in my kitchen. Uh, and one of my favorite hobbies or pastimes is to distill essential oils. And so we'll go through uh, what this all is and I'll show you guys what I do and how I distill uh, essential oils. The essential oils that I like to distill are pretty typical. Um, we can talk about that a bit, but basically uh, these are essential oils that are used in perfumery uh, to scent uh, scented candles, room diffusers, uh, room sprays, facial sprays. They're used in soaps, lotions, uh, and other compounds that are used uh, for like human consumption, basically. And so the main benefit of distillation is to uh, isolate the essential oils from the plant matter or raw materials that are being distilled. Uh, and we're going to use a hydro distillation process today. Uh, this is opposed to a solvent extraction, which is an inorganic process that uses solvents such as hexane and ethanol to extract and then refine the final product into an oil. Um, but that's not what we're doing today. We're using a hydro distillation process. Uh, benefit is that it's organic. Uh, like I said, it can be used in like lotions, soaps. Um, some cultures believe that essential oils have healing properties. Uh, and so if you're going to ingest an essential oil, it, it really should be uh, organically uh, created or extracted, I guess would be the technical term. Uh, hydro distillation is a traditional method uh, for the extraction of bioactive compounds, uh, which are the essential oils uh, from plants. Organic solvents not involved, uh, and it can be per performed uh, before the dehydration in plants. So alternatively, a solvent extraction process will typically use a dehydrated plant matter uh, whereas a distillation or a hydro distillation, which would be a steam distillation or a water distillation, um, you can use uh, green or wet plant matter, which is, which is nice. You know, it takes a step out of the process. Um, so since we're using a hydro distillation uh, technique here today, uh, there are three physiochemical uh, processes that are happening in order to uh, separate the uh, mixture that we'll put together uh, from the final product, which is the essential oil. Um, and that is hydro diffusion, uh, where, you know, water turns to steam. Um, hydrolysis, um, which is where like a water solubility breakdown, the plant matter and the oils from the plant matter will kind of combine in an aqueous solution within our flask before it turns to steam and then ends up in the collector. Uh, and so the third uh, physicochemical process is going to be uh, de uh, decomposition. The reason I bring this up is because with distilling essential oils, it's always important to preserve the uh, natural aromatic compound. And so heat will actually break down the aromatics within the essential oil and actually degrade uh, the actual scent characteristics. So it's important that we use techniques that allow us to complete the distillation process uh, while maintaining a low threshold of uh, heat, right? So we don't want to overheat the process. Uh, if we do, we can end up with a uh, not as good smelling or not as uh, a, a final product that doesn't have as much depth. So these natural essential oils are going to very much be like a perfume where they'll have a top, a middle, and a base note. Uh, and so if you wear these essential oils neat, you'll notice that you know it's very strong when you first apply it. Uh, maybe you get a you know a strong hint of like citrus, right? And then as it kind of dries and absorbs into your skin, maybe your skin heats the oil ever so slightly, 
Uh, you may get kind of a lime green, uh, maybe a, a, a menthol or even a pine smell to it. Uh, so it's really kind of fun to uh, experiment with different essential oils. We will be grinding this up with a uh, coffee grinder. So these are like resin, um, they're kind of hard. If you chew on them, it's, it turns into kind of like a bubble gum, like a gooey, uh, sticky uh, uh, type product, um, but it smells great. So these are kind of a, a pine smell to them almost when they're in their solid form. Uh, these actually form on the outside of trees. So this comes from Oman in the Middle East. Uh, and these were directly imported by a, a guy that I know out there. Um, and so these come from the source. They're very fresh. Uh, you can smell kind of the, the pine and the, the tree, you know, within it. Um, but what the, the final product will actually smell, you know, almost more like green citrusy uh, with pine and menthol in it. It's really kind of a neat uh, essential oil. One of my favorites. Uh, we'll be using a coffee grinder to, to basically grind up the uh, solid product. This is a two liter uh, boiling flask, a dual neck boiling flask. We'll have a thermometer on one side uh, and then we'll attach the distillation apparatus where this funnel is, but I haven't filled it up yet, so we'll leave the funnel. This is our mantle. So this is an electronic mantle with the digital readout. Uh, I can control the temperatures very precisely with something like this, uh, which is important for extracting that top fraction. So those very delicate uh, essential oils, that top layer that uh, people really uh, look for, right, in perfumery and whatnot. Uh, this is what's called a uh, Clevenger apparatus. And so the benefit of using this is it, it goes in the flask here and the uh, steam will travel up through this tube and into the condenser, uh, which is here. This is called an all-in condenser. Uh, it's also known as a bubble condenser. I'm sure, I hope you guys can see the, uh, the inside of it is, is like bubbles. And the benefit of this is the steam goes up and when it turns, condenses into liquid, it will travel along the inside of this bubble while allowing more steam to come up down up the middle. It allows kind of a two-way street uh, more easily than some of the other uh, condenser stops. But anyways, back to the um, Clevenger apparatus. The condenser will then drop essential oil and water into the collector here, and the overflow will go back into the still. We'll be using a vacuum. So again, uh, under a vacuum, remember water will boil at a lower temperature. So this is all about creating the distillation at, you know, not the lowest temperature possible, but low enough to where we're able to control the temperature of, you know, what's, what's happening within the, the flask while allowing distillation to occur. Uh, we've gone ahead and, and set up our uh, distillation apparatus here. Uh, I'll kind of walk you through uh, what's happening. Things are just coming up to temperature. I had originally set it at a probably 95 degrees for about 45 minutes and then put it up to 100 uh, just to heat things up nice and slow. Uh, we're talking in Celsius, so 100 degrees is boiling. Uh, it's just starting to simmer now, and I have a stir bar in there kind of keeping things moving. Uh, what we don't want to do is burn uh, the mixture here of water and frankincense, you know, the oil, the essential oils are in this bath. So what we're observing is hy hydrolysis, uh, where the water and the frankincense resin are, are kind of combining into an aqueous solution. Uh, so once they, once the temperature hits 100 and we are ready to apply pressure through the vacuum or negative pressure, uh, we'll go ahead and drop it back down to 95 degrees, uh, maybe 96, 97. Uh, and we'll let it distill to collect those uh, those very sensitive top fraction uh, essential oils. So that's where I keep these here, uh, and then we'll go ahead and collect them. But anyways, you have a, a temperature, a thermometer here, collecting the temperature so that whatever I punch in here, this is able to maintain relatively accurately. 
Uh, you have your Cleavender apparatus uh, that is designed to uh, A, recycle the, the, the water after it circulates through uh, distillation, preserving any you know, remaining essential oils that may have not separated during the initial distillation, uh, and also collecting the essential oil. So you can see here it's filled with water, same water as in the pot, uh, and they'll actually mix at some point. The oil after distillation, after it condenses in the condenser up here, it's going to fall back into here and uh, it will float on top of the water. Uh, it's really pretty neat. Uh, we'll, we'll check back in when that's ready. Uh, and you guys can see it for yourselves. Uh, again, the all-in condenser uh, has the bubbles, which is the inside. Uh, and it has a layer of cool water around the outside to help with uh, the distillation process. In here we have a fresh water pump, pumping water through this hose uh, and out this hose here to uh, keep things cool. Uh, and then this is an on-off valve uh, with a vacuum tube <clears throat> coming down to our vacuum so we can apply negative pressure uh, to aid in the boiling process at uh, sensitive temperatures. And then finally we have the uh, insulation, the, the fiberglass insulation. Uh, this will go ahead and wrap around the boiler now that we're starting to see uh, things heat up. All right, and what that does is it helps keep the uh, efficiency level where we want it to be. Uh, we don't want any unnecessary heat to escape, right? So this is kind of the best we can do to uh, insulate the top, and it will actually keep this water cooler. Uh, it will allow me to not add ice. So some distillations like sandalwood or agarwood, uh, those can go on for weeks, uh, maybe even a month, right? So to go through this process for a month, I'm sure you can imagine this water would get pretty hot after a while. So this insulation here just helps keep, you know, the heat and the cool where it's supposed to be. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drain the top fraction here. Uh, we have just a gross light glass beaker. Uh, we'll collect the water and probably a wine glass. So this water hasn't really recycled through much, so I'm probably not going to keep it. Uh, but usually this would be the hydrosol, so when we do the next pull, uh, it will have very great smelling water underneath the uh, essential oil. you guys can see okay. There we go. Easy peasy. So I really don't have much water in here. Um, there's kind of a couple ways to do this. Uh, I had mentioned before an 80 degree bath so usually that would separate you know a layer of water since there's just a couple drops. I don't even know if there's a couple drops in here. I'll put it in the freezer. The drops will freeze to the glass and then I can just pour the oil off. Um, it works pretty well when there's not much water. Uh, but usually I would drink a pipette, pipette, you know, um, like a dropper and take the water out of it so I just have oil left over. Um, all right, that's the first one. See you guys probably in a couple hours. So I'm just gonna let this go, uh, and then we'll check back. Uh, I'll have to replenish some of the water here so we don't lose any oil, uh, because the oil on top would actually feed up this pipe and dump back in, uh, and that's why we start with just a little bit of water there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the rest of this oil out of here. Um, as you guys can see, there's a good amount here. Um, Note that I've done a couple of pulls in the meanwhile, but this will be the last of it. Um, and I just wanted to make sure we got this on video. Uh, perfect. So again, we're going to take the wine glass, drain the water out. And so this is the hydrosol. Carries uh, 
bits of the essential oil. It smells very nice. Um, okay, let's get the oil to the speaker here. All right, and there you have it. Pure frankincense essential oils. So uh, there's a bit of water in here. I'll go ahead and get that out with the feet pad. Um, once it's done, it kind of settles. Uh, you can see here it's a, it's a bit more clear. So this is kind of got a yellowish tint to it. This is going to be your base layers, um, your mid layers, and this is going to be your top level. So this is actually quite clear. Uh, and then the difference in smell between the two is very light. You know, it's almost faint, kind of a faint, uh, rich citrus. This is much stronger and heavier. Uh, has more of a menthol, you know, kind of in-your-face, pungent. Uh, not as pretty, right? But both of these would be pure essential oils. Uh, you could mix them into perfume, scented candles, uh, room diffusers. Uh, this hydrosol makes a great like uh, facial spray or pillow spray if you uh, are going to bed, kind of like lavender. It's very subtle. Um, that about wraps it up. I'm gonna go ahead and break this down and get it cleaned up. Um, Thank you for joining me. You know, this was uh, fun to show you uh, one of my favorite hobbies. Um, enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks.